In 2007, Nintendo released the 8th installment in the Mario Party series, and it ended up being the best-selling Mario Party game at the time, selling 8 million copies worldwide. It was almost inevitable that there was going to be a Mario Party 9, right? Yeah. Fans had to end up waiting another four years before Mario Party 9 was finally announced. It also didn't help that during production of the game, Hudson was acquired by Konami and development would go to ND Cube. In 2011, even when Nintendo announced their next console, the Wii U, there was still a lot of hype for Mario Party 9. It was also the last Mario game released for the Wii, and boy was it a bad note to go out on. Mario Party 9 dropped in March of 2012 in Japan a month later, and ended up receiving mixed reviews, but that wasn't new for Mario Party. The last game had also received mixed reviews. There were a lot of new things that came in Mario Party 9, and they weren't exactly the most popular decisions. In this video, I will go in depth of the party mode and the solo mode. I will go in depth of why it fails as a Mario Party game, and I'll eventually go into why it fails as a standalone game. The first thing I noticed when playing this was the character roster it is kind of lame when compared to prior games in the series. Boo had been playable since Mario Party 5, and Toadette had been playable since Mario Party 6, and both characters end up retired. Toadette doesn't even show up in the game, period, and that may come off as a nuisance, and though this was a minor inconvenience, this is nothing compared to what fans were about to witness. The first board in party mode is Toad Road, and then... The Mario Party franchise has officially jumped the shark. I really don't want this whole video to be ranting about the car mechanic, as that's what everyone in the grandmother complains about Mario Party 9. And trust me, I will go more in depth as to why I have problems with it later in the video, so stick around until the end. Though it is clearly an awful mechanic. The music is kind of bland too. Just for comparison's sake, I'm going to play the song The First Born in Mario Party 9, and the song in the first board of Mario Party 3. So instead of the goal being to collect the most stars, the goal is to collect the most mini stars. There are also mini stars that make you lose some as well. Literally the only two returning spaces are Bowser spaces and event spaces, which are happening spaces in previous games. Technically blue spaces are still there, but they give you special dice blocks. Speaking of dice blocks, I have to go to another thing to change. Gone are the days where you can roll 1 to 10, you can only roll up to 6 unless you get a special 1 to 10 dice block. Remember how in every other Mario Party game prior to this, after every player's turn, you play a minigame? Gone are those days as well. You can only play a minigame either by landing on a specific spaces or getting one in a chest. This right here is the biggest problem I have with Mario Party 9. A combination of the car making everyone travel together and the lack of minigames that show eliminates any strategy you can use in earlier games and it will only get worse later on. Each board has a captain's event for chances at mini stars. Just like everything else in this game, it's luck oriented if you get any mini stars unless maybe you're the captain, but even still, no guarantee right there. Every board has two boss minigames, the mid-boss and the end-boss, and in every minigame, mini stars are given up depending on how you place in the minigame. You get a captain's bonus if it's your turn when you make it to either boss. You get special events for nearing the finish line, like how in prior games during the last five turns, and Bowser asks to add Bowser spaces. 
Even if you say no, he still adds the Bowser spaces. Is there really any point in having an option? Anyone that's played Mario Party wouldn't want those and would obviously say no, but there's really no point in having an option if he's still going to give them anyway. The Bowser spaces also have options to lose half your mini stars and battle for half your mini stars. The game designers must have fell in love with this idea because you're going to see this in almost every subsequent board. There are bonus stars at the end of each board, but much like the previous two Mario Party games, bonus stars are randomized. I actually really don't like randomized bonus stars in any game they're in. It's never fair to lose entire rounds because the wrong bonus stars are offered. Also, is there really any point in keeping the bonus star mechanic if you can't collect any actual stars? Each bonus star is worth 5 mini stars, so it's nothing really special. The second board of Mario Party 9 is Bob on Factory, and this here is when things are going to get from mildly irritating to actual bad game design. The gimmick to this board is that there will be a Bob on chasing you on your card. If it blows up and you're the captain, you end up losing half of your mini stars. Again, imagine being in the lead the whole game and you get blown up and you go from first to like third place and it's out of your control. You also have the chance of laying on a Bowser's face and the same thing happening. When I played this board while recording the footage of this video, I got blown up all three times and still won because I got lucky in a Bowser's face. The third Mario Party 9 board is Boo's Horror Castle, and trust me, if you think the other two boards are bad, this one makes the other two look good by comparison. The board is filled with boos that make you lose half your mini stars, and even worse, that is that if multiple boos hit you, you will lose half your mini stars for every boo that reaches you. For real, who in their right mind greenlit this game? I just don't know how, like, Mario Party 9 can go fuck itself, and it gets worse, just wait. Then we go on to Blooper Beach. I will say out of all the Mario Party 9 boards, Blooper Beach is the blandest. There aren't as many opportunities to lose half your mini stars at once, except for a sushi that if it reaches you, it happens. I kinda like the peaceful music. The like Toad Road, this board is more boring than frustrating. Happening spaces turn all mini stars into mini stars, but that's about it. I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind. At last we reach Magma Mine. This is the board that is the cruelest towards the player, in my honest opinion. This board is so awful that it makes everything you saw previously look good by comparison. The direction you go at Junction's are complete random. If you get burned by magma, you lose half your mini stars, and keep in mind, there are still Bowser spaces you do have to deal with as well. I will dissect more of magma mine when we get the solo mode, so stick around. Once you play every board in party mode at least once you unlock Bowser Station, this board hands out mini stars like candy and has no hazards, has plenty of opportunities to get mini stars and even jackpot mini games but still wasn't exactly the kindest towards me. When I got the Bowser Jr. minigame, first off, this is a minigame that has zero skill and is bullshit rolling luck. You have to land on the 3, 6, 9, 12, or 15, and the amount you land on is the amount of hits you lay down. I didn't even get a single point. I was also in dead last the whole time. I almost made a comeback in the battle for half your mini stars minigame I came in second in. And I didn't even play second overall. The Bowser minigame isn't much better, it's just a little less luck oriented. Though you did think we're done with Mario Party 9, we still have to do solo mode for completion's sake. Yay! Solo mode actually starts with a plot of Bowser and Bowser Jr. wanting to steal all the mini stars, but why couldn't they use this as the intro? I don't know. Your main antagonists on each board are Shy Guy and Magikoopa, and you can get one or both on a board. You have to win the board in order to advance. In solo mode, there are also default bosses, and in Toad Road's case, you face Lakitu and Wiggler, which are two easy bosses. 
Bob on Factory faced just magic goop, and oh boy, let me tell you how this board went. The bosses I had massive trouble with, but in the end I actually won by one mini star. But now I have to talk about why I hate Magma Mines so much, and the story of recording this board can be its own video. I had to record this board three times, and each time I lost at the very end, and each time Magic Koopa won the round. I eventually tried it again two days later, and I thought I was going to get screwed again, but watch this. I literally tied with Magic Koopa and was allowed to advance in the board. Even better, if Dice Block Star had been offered, I would have lost and had to redo the board. I had better luck in a round in Bowser Station and Lastly, you can buy DK's Jungle Ruin in the extras for 500 mini stars. I'm gonna ease myself. I'm gonna face only Magic Koopa and put him on easy. I absolutely dominated this board, and I will say of the Mario Party 9 boards, DK's Jungle Ruins is the best of them as it's non-linear and it's quicker to get through. You also collected bananas instead of mini stars. In the end, I was able to beat Magic Koopa by over 100 bananas.